In this video, we're going to talk about personal cloud storage without any subscription fees. So, if you want to be able to take photos and videos with your phone and back it up on your own cloud storage, or if you want to be able to back up your own files, so I do a lot of videos because of YouTube, I can back up a lot of those files on this network attached storage. So, I'm going to go over the setup, we'll go over some use cases, I'll show you guys how to set all that stuff up. HDMI, USB 3.2, two USB 2.0s. We have a 2.5 gig LAN and a 10 gig LAN. That's what I'm going to be using. Factory reset and power. Power button, LEDs, SD card, USB-C, and USB 3.2. Screwdrivers with some screws. Two Cat7 Ethernet cables. And a 100 to 240 volt power supply and 150 watts as the output. And um, yeah, let's just get started. So, you can reach out. They sponsored this video. They sent me their DXP4800 Plus along with four drives, dedicated drives by Western Digital, four terabytes each. And I'm going to go over the setup process. Now, the packaging, very well packaged, very clean. And to pop in the hard drives was very, very easy to put in there. Very, very easy. Now, in case you guys are wondering, even though I'm using Western Digital Red Plus drives, you don't necessarily need to use those drives. They have fairly wide compatibility with third party hard drives and SSDs. In fact, they have the whole list on their website. And this one is supposed to be more of a beginner friendly NAS. So once you power it on and connect it to your network via ethernet, all you need to do is open up a browser and go to find.ugnas.com on a computer that's on the same network. Then it'll ask you for a device name and an administrator account and a password. Once you set that up, it's gonna ask you if you want, you can make a Ugreen cloud account to enable remote access. And you don't have to do that. I actually skipped this option for now, but it is something you can do if you want to set up for remote access, um, basically if you're not at home, essentially. And then it's going to ask you just basically system update options. I just left it on the default and I just clicked initialize, waited a couple minutes, and then we're going to actually get to how we set it up for the storage pool. We have to start with the storage pool. So I'm going to double click on storage and then I'm going to click on storage and I'm going to click create. Now, I see all four of my drives in here, and you, I don't have to select all four, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a storage pool using all four, and then I'm just gonna create one volume. I have the option to partition it. There's actually a whole bunch of options in here, but I'm just gonna simplify it and just do one. So I'm gonna select all four drives, and if, in case you guys are wondering why is it showing up as 3.6 terabytes when you put a four terabyte drive in there? Well, the reason is, has nothing to do with Ugreen. Um, it's just the way the hard drives are measured. They kind of use like a metric style system where they assume essentially like 1000 bytes is one kilobyte. But really in a computer world, things are in powers of two because it's binary. So really 1024 bytes is actually one kilobyte. And so when you keep increasing that number, um, that's why the bigger the hard drive is, the more of a discrepancy you see. So it's really 3.6 terabytes. So now we're going to select RAID type. I just wanted to explain that. It has nothing to do with Ugreen, but just wanted to explain that. Um, now it says select the RAID type. Now RAID types, this is completely on you, which one you want to select. I'm personally going to select RAID 5. And everyone gives you an explanation of what it is, but basically RAID 5 means... I can have one hard drive fail, and as long as I replace that hard drive soon enough <clears throat> where the other three are, didn't fail, I can get all my data back. So I, I don't lose any data if one hard drive fails. Now there's another one, RAID 6 is basically if two hard drives fail, I will still not lose any of my data as long as I replace those hard drives soon enough. So um, I think one hard drive is enough for me, and I'm going to get 10.8 terabytes out of the 14.5 that's available. But if you wanna get the full 14.5, there are other options you can select. Again, don't wanna go into this uh, super long explanation. There's literally, you can make an entire video on this. So once you create a storage pool, now you can assign a volume. And I'm going to select it on the max, which is by default. I could you know, lower it and stuff too, but I'm gonna just select it on the max. And then you can select your file system. So you could do ext4 or btrfs. So I'm just gonna do btrfs. And I'm gonna click create. Now when I click create, this is going to take a pretty long time. And this is very, very important. There is nothing on those hard drives right now because they're brand new. If there was anything on these hard drives, this would delete everything on those hard drives. So you would literally lose everything. So 
Obviously, if you are putting used hard drives in there, back up your data before you do this because this will you will lose everything on these hard drives. So do keep that in mind. I again doesn't matter for me because these are brand new drives. So I'm gonna click format. But again, as soon as you click format, you're gonna erase everything from the drives that are on there. So keep that in mind. Okay, so then it says type in your password, which I'm gonna type in. And it's gonna create a storage pool. And this is actually gonna take a few hours the first time you do it. Um, but while it's creating it in the background, you can actually start using this thing. So um, it takes a few minutes and it says creation successful, creation successful. So you can actually start using it now, even though this will take um, several hours for this storage pool to actually get created. So I'm gonna close this and it's going to run in the background. I can always click on storage and click on storage and it'll give me the estimated time. So now that I've done this, I'm going to go to App Center and I'm going to install a couple apps. So I'm going to install Sync and Backup and it tells you to select which volume you want to select it on. I'm going to click always install on this just because I only have one volume. So I'm just going to click this. So when asked me again, but if you have more than one, you can select that. I'm also gonna click Photos. Now, the reason why I'm installing Photos and the Sync and Backup is because I need that to be able to backup uh, files from my phone. I also need a app on the phone that I've already installed. And then you can install other things, music, theater, cloud drives, and other things like that. So that's, that's all on you. I can install theater if I wanted to. And then there's a few other options in here. Now you can check out stuff. Jellyfin, you can set this up as well to basically be able to see your video files. And um, yeah, but I'm mainly going to use this as a backup and I'm just basically for my video files, also for some of my photos as well on this particular phone that I'll demo for you guys. Okay, so once you get that set up, now we're gonna go to, um, uh, task manager just gives you the statuses and everything like that CPU GPU what's being used. So it also tells you that stuff right here as well um, <clears throat> But we're gonna click on files and then I'm gonna click on shared folder now We need to make shared folders so we can be able to access these files from a computer So whether I'm on the Mac whether I'm on Windows whether I'm on Linux I don't have any Linux operating systems right now But I'll show you guys with the Mac and I'll show you guys with Windows as well so, so I'm gonna click on new folder, I'm gonna create a new shared folder, and I'm gonna call this photo. And then again, volume one is the only volume I have, and then you can have a recycle bin that if you accidentally delete something, you can recover it or you don't have to. I like to have that just in case, so I'm gonna click create, and then I'm gonna select read write. So. I'm going to press OK because if you have different users, you can set different options. So you can have things that like, oh, I have a user and I don't even want them to see these files. So you can do, there's a lot of things you could do. Read only or access denied and stuff like that. So I did my photo and I'm going to do another one. I'll do video. And then same thing, create. Um, same thing here, create. I'm going to press OK. If I, and then... All I need to do is click refresh right here. So in case I messed up and I wanna delete this, it doesn't seem like there's an obvious option here. So it's like, oh, right click, I don't see the delete. How do I delete this? Like, what do I do? Um, so you basically click on this briefcase, you click on shared folder management, and then when you click here, you, you're able to delete it here. So I could type in delete and delete that if I wanted to. So that's how you would be able to delete it in case you made one and um, yeah. So, and then feel free to make more and, um, you know, you have your personal folder, user folder. So there's a lot of stuff like that you can do. Okay. So at this point, this guy is ready for me to use. And again, if I click on storage, I can see the status is 0.8%. It's literally going to take about seven hours, a little less than seven hours for this to finish. But again, I can't, <clears throat> I can use this right now. So the way I use this is I go to finder. And when I click on Finder, I just need Finder to appear so I can actually click on this. And I'm going to click on, oh, by the way, I should show you guys how to access that. 
So if I go to control panel and I click on device connection, okay, so file services, you need to enable this SMB service. So if you go to control panel, click on file service like I did, you need to enable this. If this is not enabled, you cannot access this from a Mac. So I need to enable that. I need to click apply. And then it actually tells you how to access it here. So I click on photos and then I click on go, I click connect to server, and then this is where I would type that in, which I've already done here. So, and then click on connect, and then it'll ask me for my username and password, but because I've already put that stuff in earlier, I actually just get to select. Um, and then it also shows up here, and then I can click on video if I wanted to um, as well. At this point, the NAS is usable, so I'm gonna open up photos, I'm gonna click on this, I'm going to copy this, and this is um, 8.25 gigabytes, so it's 8.25 gigabytes, it's some video files, and I'm going to paste it in here, just so you guys get a glimpse. Now, the connection on this laptop is a 2.5 gigabit connection, on my main computer, it's actually a 10 gig connection, just because it's hooked up to the same 10 gig switch, so it would be faster on the other one, but literally... I'm transferring 8.25 gigabytes um, of data, not gigabits, but gigabytes of data. And it's transferring very, very quickly, and it can even go faster on my main computer. And again, all while this thing is actually still um, creating a storage pool, so if I clicked on the storage pool, all while this one is, you know, <laughs> oh, this one says nine days remaining. It's probably because it was copying, so I had to, like, um, calm down. So it shouldn't, it, it takes several hours. It, it shouldn't take nine days. So I've actually already done this. I just redid it just so I could record it and show you guys how to do this stuff. I figured that would make for a better video. But, yeah, so these files are here, and I can click on it. I could press play. And um, there it is. So I went to the Play Store on my Android phone. I typed in New Green NAS and I basically click install. And this will allow me to both control the NAS from here. And I'm like pointing to the browser. Uh, it's actually over there. And I can also back up photos and videos by doing this. So I'm going to click on open. And then I'm going to click on login, and because I'm on the same Wi-Fi network, I just have to type in the name of this thing and the port. So P, and then I have to do the colon, and then type in my port number, and then type in my info, remember, I'll just do remember, and this finds everything. So then I'm going to do allow notifications, I'll do silent, and then I'm going to click on photos, and I'll go to tools and then I'm going to do photo backup. I'm going to click go to to enable permissions and then give that a second. And then I'm going to enable that. If I could, there it is. Okay. So it's going to back up everything uh, basically here. I can create a new folder if I wanted to as well. I can also. Um, do sort by date or just every everything is in one folder. And so now, if I take a picture with my phone, let's say if I'm taking a picture of my keyboard, I'll take a picture of my half-eaten apple right here, which I'm going to finish. And then I'm going to take a picture of the mouse. And, um, yeah, that should be good. Okay, so this way, if I go here, it, it already says backed up, so now it says backing up, remaining items three. So basically in the background, it's actually backing up the files. So if I go to files right here, if I click on this stuff, I can see it from here as well. So 2025 and then the month, because we're in July right now. And basically there it is. So the three pictures I took are literally in the NAS already. So, and it says remaining items, but it, it's already in there. So, so yeah, so I can back this up. I can also enable it to do it online as well, um, but I'm already happy with it uh, just happening on Wi-Fi. And I can also, if I go back, I can actually install stuff from here as well. So I don't even have to go to this web interface. I could click on App Center, and then I can say, 
you know, um, text edit, I can say install that and it'll actually install it. Um, and I'll even get a notification on the browser as you guys could see, text edit install successfully. So I brought my Windows laptop and I'm gonna demonstrate how to get to it. So you just go to Windows Explorer. You can also hit the Windows and E keyboard on the Windows and E key on the keyboard uh, for a shortcut to this. So I could hit the Windows key and E and it'll take me to the same spot. And all I need to do is just basically type it in, which I've already done over here, but I basically just type that in. Now the first time you go here, it will ask you for your username and password, and then you could click remember, but aside from that, you're golden. So now I can basically click here and then open up the file, and it should play it over here as well. As you guys could see, it's just playing it. So you have access to all this stuff on Windows, and if you wanna map the drive, so you always have a permanent drive, you, could, you have to go to this PC, and then from here, there's an option that says these three buttons, and you do map network drive, and then let's say I wanted to map it to the U drive, I would just type in DXP, which is what I called it, and I could do photo, and you, you basically, you have to type in the share name, you can't just type in the server name, you have to type in the share name as well. And then the first time again, if you do it, it's gonna ask you for your credentials, but because I've already typed it in, it's good. So now in the future, if I literally just open up the windows, I could click on this PC, and the U drive is right here and I have access to it and, and literally right here and I'm good to go on Windows. There it is. Now I'm on the faster computer that has the 10 gig connection and I'm gonna copy over this file. So if I click on get info, this is 14.41 gigabytes. And because they're both on a 10 gig, the same 10 gig switch, they actually have up to 10 gig um, connection to each other. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do paste, by the way, I'm on DXP 4800P, I'm gonna click on photo, and I'm gonna click paste, just so there's no, and then if I go, so less than a minute for 14.41 gigabytes, I mean, that's very, very fast, very, very fast. So now if I click on this, you guys will actually see that it is starting to speed up. Um, so everything is really just being used more and more. So the CPU is being used more. GPU not really, because it doesn't really need to use that. It's really the network that's, that's being used up right now. And all this, while storage is actually still running, I mean, there's still quite a bit of time, but once it gets paused, this will actually slow. This, this time will significantly decrease. But because it's copying this, it's actually slowing that down. So this can actually copy potentially even a bit faster if it wasn't running in the storage pool, but I mean, these speeds are so fast that it's pretty crazy. Very, very fast speeds for something on the network that's not locally on the same computer. And there it is, pretty much done. And double click, and everything's right here as you guys could see. So in a nutshell, this thing allows you to copy files very quickly. You can back up your own files from your computer or from your phone and you don't even need to pay a subscription. So this thing overall is pretty awesome. So if you guys enjoyed this video, smash the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.